And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. This is Drink with Rick episode number 94. That's right, 94 episodes. We're getting there. We're getting there, folks. Going up to the big 100. Let's see if we can make it. Let's see if we can do it. If you're joining me for the first time, I, of course, am Rick. I'm the host of the show, but it is not really my show. This show isn't about me. It's somewhat about the wine, but this is really a show about you and me. Getting together on a Saturday night, kicking back, having some wine, or whatever your favorite beverage is. Just kicking back and just chatting with each other and just having a great time. And that's what we're going to do for the next hour or two. Uh, I want to say that if you're joining me uh, just now for the first time, this is a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have some show notes, and they're right here. I don't always follow them. Uh, I often go off tangent, but you see, you drive the show. So... If, uh, you know, whatever you're talking about, I mean, uh, you ask me questions or, or talk to me about you know, what's going on with your life, what you're drinking, what you're not drinking, what you like to see me drinking, whatever you want to talk about. You know, as long as it's not politics or religion, we don't, those are off limits. But let's, do, let's talk about things that are going to be bringing people together because that's what the wine is about. The wine is about bringing people together. And that's what we're, we're aiming to do on this show. That's the aim of this show, uh, this tonight and every night. Of course, you can watch on and get into the chat, the live chat uh, on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Drink with Rick. You can also chat with me live, all of us live, on YouTube. YouTube channel is Drink with Rick. Also on Twitch, Twitch is Drink with Rick 1, Drink with Rick the number 1. And uh, chat live there. Also, we're on Twitter. You can tweet me on Twitter, watch on Twitter or live via Periscope. And... Uh, Tweet me there. Now, also on the website, Drink With Rick is the website, drinkwithrick.com. I don't have a chat going there, but if you open up the post that this live stream is on, and the live stream is on right now, I just checked a few moments ago, just before the start of the show, and if you click on that post and open it up, you can click on the comments box below. You can comment to me, and I will respond in kind. Now, of course, the podcast goes up at 10 p.m. Eastern every Monday night, every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And you can uh, catch the podcast on all of these venues here, pretty much everywhere where you can find a podcast. On the website, uh, you can subscribe on the website at drinkwithrick.com. This is the subscribe page here. Uh, or on the sidebar, you can subscribe via Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, the new podcast index created by the Podfather, uh, Mr. Curry, and uh, by email. Now, if you can, if you want, you can click on that button that you see down there at the bottom. Uh, by email, just click on that little button. You can input your email address, and as soon as the show drops. You can get the episode, the latest episode, in your inbox as soon as the show drops each week. Uh, you don't have to do anything. Easy peasy by email. Of course, the RSS feed is there. But you can do all of that at drinkwithrick.com. Now, uh, of course, also, I almost forgot, you can contact me, rick at civilianmedia.com, if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Uh, queries, any anything at all. And of course, if you have a wine, if you want me a uh, wine suggestion, if you're a winery or a uh, or someone, who, a vendor, uh, and you want me to try a wine and give it a fair review, and we've done that in a number of times in the past, you can uh, send me a bottle, rick at civilianmedia.com, contact me there. I promise I will give it a fair and honest review and, uh, well, see, see how it uh fares out how it pans out um send me send me one and uh, i'll give it a fair review i promise and uh we'll uh yeah <laughs> take it from there anyway contact me at savoymedia.com i lost it my train of thought that's how it goes sometimes uh okay i'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to watch three or four things here at once no excuse i'm the host of the show i'm supposed to be doing that that's my job got a little sidetracked there for a moment but anyway that's drinkwithrick.com, rick at savoyamedia.com. Okay, so let's get right down to it. Uh, this is the wine that we're going to be opening tonight. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon. And it is a, it's called a Val de Salas. It's, it's, actually, uh, it's, it's actually by uh, Jean-Claude, 
Moss, Jean-Claude Moss. And it is a genuine Fran French wine from France. It is a red wine. And it's, uh, I believe it's supposed to be 100% a cab. So we're going to find out a little bit more about that wine in a minute. But before we do that, let's get to the chat and see who has joined us in the chat. Now, uh, right off the bat, let me see what I've got. I've got any comments here going on. I don't see anything going on on Facebook. Uh, kind of quiet on YouTube. Twitch, let's see how things are going on Twitch. Ah, and uh, CM Sinners in the chat on Twitch it says, whoop, who's here watching tonight? And, uh, you know, you are a CM Center. I'm sure people will be rolling in. Now, of course, this is right after the holidays, so I don't know how many people are going to be joining us tonight, but I hope uh, hope there will be a few that uh, kind of come in and are watching. If you're watching pa uh, passively, that's okay first. Ah, Toto the Dog 1. Toto the Dog 1 says, hi, Rick, and hi to you too, Toto the Dog 1. It's great to see you in the chat. Stick around. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I have a couple of announcements too. Uh, towards the end of the show. I did not give the show itinerary uh, for this episode, so to speak, but I have, you know, I received some really nice gifts um, this past week, and I want to show them off to you. A couple of them that are really, really special, that are very interesting. I think you'll enjoy uh, seeing those. And, uh, of course, we're going to have an open chat. This is going to be open chat. Talk about what you got. What did you get this year? What did you get? Or what did you give this year? That's, that's fine. Let's talk about that. And uh, you know what? I might have a little surprise for you there, too. Uh, for those of you who uh, have your own Twitch channels and your own uh, YouTube channels and things like that, I've got a little bit of something that we can do towards the end of the show that I would really like to uh, enjoy. Uh, I'd really like for you to participate in it because I think you'll have a lot of fun. I think we'll all really enjoy it. Uh, Proper Barnyard's in the uh, chat, and Proper Barnes, Barnstar. Did I say Barnyard? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get used to this dark theme here on Twitch. Proper Barn Stars in the chat. I could hardly read it in the red. Uh, it says, hey, Rick, happy holidays. Hope you're all doing well, and I hope you're doing well, too, Proper Barn Star. Uh, sorry about that that little um, mix-up there. <clears throat> you normally have it, this against a lighter background on Twitch and against the dark uh, background. Uh, the red there just kind of uh, sort of popped out. Uh, it was a little bit hard to read at first. Um Let's go back to Facebook for just a moment to see if we have anyone in the chat on Facebook. We have some birthdays to toast, too, some birthdays and some national days. I hope you'll, you'll uh, uh, hang around for those, too, as well. So uh, let me get back on page here, on track. Okay, we're checking all of the chats. Everything looks good. I'm going to hang around Twitch just a little bit. Yes, Twitch has my full attention at the moment, so, so chat away, chat away. Anyway, so getting back to the wine, this is what we have. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's called a Val de Salas. It is a Pays Doc. It's a 2019. And uh, on the front, I'm going to read the front because there's some stuff on the front that'll, that's uh, uh, interesting to read. It says, a subtle blend with notes of ripe red and black fruits lifted by aromas of vanilla and mocha. Ooh, this should be good. Well, I can hardly wait to open this up and try it. Okay, well, here's the back. Here's the back of the, the wine, the back label. The back label, I'm going to read this too because I don't know how easy it is to read off the screen, especially if you're watching on a cell phone or something like that, tablet. It says, uh, Val de Salas Cabernet Sauvignon Paystock. Uh, Val de Salas wines represent my vision of the meaty. Their labels shine a spotlight on certain unique places which bring out the characters of my wines, the fruit, the Harmony, the Richness, and the Mediterranean Style by Jean-Claude Moss. This is bottled by Jean-Claude Moss in France. It is a product of France, a red wine. There is 12, oh no, excuse me, there's 14.2% alcohol by volume, ABV. It uh, is a 750 milliliter bottle, and it is imported by Moss, Jean-Claude Moss. So uh, apparently I have an address in Denver. Colorado, that's that's interesting, but uh, that's what it says on the back of the wine. So, let's go ahead and open the wine. Everybody ready for us to open this bottle of wine? Yes, this is the very last wine stream of 2020. We made it to 2020, didn't? Uh, to the end of 2020, I should say. Uh, just about. We're only a few days away. I have an announcement about that too later on. But um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and open this. Let me make sure that this uh, chat is scrolling for me. I don't know it, uh, if this if I'm seeing everything in the chat. If I'm not, shout out again because uh, 
just in case I miss you. Let's go ahead and open this wine. And I've got the foil cutter here, which is getting a little bit worn from, well, nearly two years of opening wine bottles. Never been sharpened. <laughs> and I have my trusty uh, bottle opener, which we've gone through several of these since the uh, wine stream began. It says 2019 on the, the cork. I don't know if you can see that. Mm. See that? 2019 on the cork. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, open up this bottle. Get, get the corkscrew in there. And uh, get a few good twists. How's your week going? How did your week go? How did uh, I understand everyone had uh, their, their holidays and uh, wondered uh, what you uh, did on your holidays? Some of, for some of us, the holidays are still going on, and they will be going on until after, uh, after January 1st. Well, after January 1st. All right, the bottle is open, and we have my, to pour it out, we have my trusty Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set, which, by the way, you can actually purchase off Amazon or from Amazon. You can actually click on the banner on my website at drinkwithrick.com to order it if you want to, if you, if you want to help support the show, and uh, maybe... Maybe Jeff Be Bezos might find it in, in within his his heart um, to. Uh, I was going to say something else, but I'm, I'm not. I'm too. I'm, I want to be nice to to, to Mr. Bezos. Uh, you know, he may find it within his heart to uh, to send me a few cents my way. I don't know. Maybe not. Who knows? But anyway, it'd be nice if he did. Okay, as the. The uh, aerator is in place, and to hold the wine, of course, I have my trusty, my trusty um, Galway Genuine Irish Crystal Glass from Ireland, given to me by my employers at BuyTwoWayRadios.com, who are very, very nice people, by the way. Very great. They're great people. And uh, it was such a nice gift that they gave me here. And... Let's see, we can go ahead and pour a little bit of this wine in the bottle, or in the, the glass. I haven't had any yet, folks. I really haven't. This is, uh, like I said, this is what ha happens when you're doing a show live, you're going to make mistakes. And sometimes it just wicks my merge all up, and I don't know what I'm saying. So, you know, just bear with me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Seam Cinder said, uh, <laughs> Proper Barnstar says, ha ha, good old Jeff Lowe, Jeffo. Oh, I, uh, I I missed some of this. I, I'm missing the chat, aren't I? I am. It says, uh, Barnstar says, it was very low-key and quiet, but nothing to complain about. I treated myself to Wonder Woman 1984 as my solo holiday gift, and it was fun. So you, uh, so it was a quiet, quiet Christmas, but you watched uh, Wonder Woman 1984. How was that? How was that? Uh I haven't really heard much about it. There's been a lot of hoopla about it, but I haven't really heard much. I saw the, I saw the trailer. I saw a trailer for it. It looked interesting. It looked interesting, but um, and uh, Barnstar says the cab looks tasty. Hope it's a good one, Rick. And so do I. Uh, says ha ha, good old Jeffo. Oh, uh, he's talking to CM Center, I think. So uh, let's see who else is in Facebook here before I go any farther. Don't see anything going on on Facebook at the moment. It looks pretty pretty quiet, and YouTube is kind of cool. Oh, my wife, she is, in, uh, is on YouTube. She says hello and right back at you so for my lovely wife, Chi, who also prepared this. Oh, I almost forgot to show this to you. This is this is what we're going to pair it with tonight. What we're going to pair it with tonight, yeah, I'm, I'm getting way off track, aren't I? What we have to pair it with tonight, we have some lamb. We have some lamb that my lovely wife, Chi, made the other night. And some spaghetti with uh, meat sauce. This is a beef uh, hamburger beef sauce, uh, which should go pretty well with the cab as well. Then we have some crackers to clear the palate with. And for cheeses, we have a very nice cheddar that my wife has fallen in love with. That she just uh, she just really loves this cheddar. I like it too. It's a really nice cheddar. But she, boy, she I I watched her. I thought she was gonna eat half a block of this thing one night. 
uh, by herself, but she really likes it, and I, I like it too. It's really good. And also, of course, the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda, which we've never had a miss on in a show, and I'm not expecting us to have a miss on it tonight either. And, of course, you see this thing in the middle? What's in the middle is a blueberry pie. My wife made a blueberry pie, and uh, you know what? If uh, a square guy shows up, he and, uh, you know, I, I think he would like to, to see this. This is a really nice blueberry pie that, uh, that my wife made. And, uh, oh, we had some the other night, and it was really, really good. I had it with a little bit of ice cream on it. It was really good with that. But, uh, yeah, I did indulge myself a little bit. It's the holidays. What can I say? But we're going to have some a little bit with the wine. Try it with the wine and see how it uh, tastes with that. Because oftentimes these fruit-filled uh, pies will go pretty well with wine. So... It's, it's, it'll be something to, I'm looking forward to this, I'm looking forward to this. We're going to try it in just a few minutes. Before we do that, let's find out a little bit more about this wine. I'm, I'm going to let this open up and breathe because what happened was, now I sent, I sent my sister Penny and uh, my brother-in-law Tom uh, some wine for the holidays, and this was one of the bottles that I sent them. This was one of the wines I sent them. Now, I, what I do is I sent them uh, two reds, two whites, and that's because Penny likes the reds, Tom prefers the whites, and I, what I wanted to do is I, I handpicked these wines. I wanted to pick one that was uh, a red and a white that I've tried on the wine stream in the past that I really, really liked, that was two of, that were my favorites, and then I also picked a red and a white that was a recommendation that I was planning to try here on the wine stream, but hadn't done so yet. And so I sent them one of each. And uh, they opened up, I think they opened up this cap tonight, earlier tonight, and she texted me and said it was very good. And uh, so I'm looking forward to trying it out myself and uh, see as it, if it's everything uh, that, uh, that she says it is and, and maybe more. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. But I'm going with her recommendation. She said to open it up. She recommended that I let the wine, open up the wine and let it breathe somewhat before before uh, really just getting into it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a minute or two. She said, actually, she said to give it some swirls, a lot of swirls, kind of open the wine up. And I'm doing that. Penny, if you're watching now, Penny, if you and Tom are watching, I'm opening up this wine and I'm giving it some good swirls. We're going to let it open up for just a moment because I like to let it breathe um, a bit. And while it's doing that, let's find out a little bit more about this wine. Now, I looked it up online. It wasn't a whole lot of on wine, uh, online for it. Uh, wine Store has it, of course. This is where I purchased mine. was from, from Wine Store in Blakeney, North Carolina. And Wine Store, uh, their website is wine, winestore-online.com. And it'll ship to a lot of states. There, there are a lot of sh states that they will ship to. And uh, they have this cap here, the Val de Salas Cabernet. And they had it. Well, I'm not going to tell you what they had it for just yet. Because <laughs> I went to a few other sites, and there were a couple other places that, that had it as well. Vivino had it, but they had it listed for $15.99. They had it listed for $15.99. I checked around. It seemed to be about the going rate for this wine, for wherever I could find it. It was around the $15.99, $16 mark. Now I'm going to tell you what I paid for it, because I have the receipt right here. And I paid... I paid for this bottle of wine because it was kind of on a sale, uh, and I think it is still on sale for a limited time, $9.99, $9.99. Now, I get some pretty good deals at Wine Store, and some of the other bottles of wine that I sent uh, a Penny and Tom were not this, were not this good of a deal, okay? They were, they, they were pretty much a regular price, but this was actually a pretty good deal, so I thought, well, you know, I had to send him a bottle if I'm going to try it on the on the uh, show tonight, so uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to give it a try in just a few moments, but I, you know, I wasn't really sure what to make of it based on some of the ratings, because there weren't a whole lot of ratings on it. I didn't see a whole lot on it on Vivino, and I didn't see a lot of um, uh, ratings on a lot of other places, but it does look to be a very a uh, very dense, uh, bold wine. It looks it looks like a very full-bodied wine. And this is a 100% Cab, which uh, Cabernets are going to be fairly full-bodied. They are. So we're going to give it uh, a whiff. Let's give it a whiff. And right off the nose, oh, wow, I'm getting a mix, a very eclectic mix of um, aromas here. And I'm getting... 
there, there's some black fruit in here. Some black fruit in here. I want to say some blackberry. But I'm getting some prune. <laughs> and the way I recognize the prune is because I had some prune juice uh, a few nights ago. I'm not going to say why, but I, I, I had some a few nights ago. And uh, my wife bought another bottle uh, bought another bottle of prune juice for me today. There's TMI for you right there. So um, I'm we're very well acquainted with the aroma of prune juice right now. But it does, uh, yeah, it smells a little, a little on the oaky side. Let's give it a taste. Wow. Very interesting. I'm getting a lot, a mix of a lot of different, a lot of different uh, flavors in here. Yeah, there are definitely some black fruits. I'm getting, I'm getting some red cherry, but I'm getting, I'm, I'm also getting a little bit of black uh, cherry and a little blackberry. And yes, I'm tasting the prune. I'm tasting the prune, and um, I'm also, it, it, it's a little on the oak side. A little oaky, very dry. The finish is not super long, but it is quite a, quite a finish. This is a, a fairly bold wine. It's not the boldest I've had, but it's fairly bold. Uh, I'm glad it's not the boldest I've had because I've had a couple of bold wines. I was a little concerned because I think my sister texted me earlier and says, this, this wine's kind of bold. She says it, it is uh, dry. And it is that, but it's it's not super dry, but it's it's fairly dry, and it's um and, and it's a little bit. I, I want to say the acidity is a little high on this wine, which is not which is not bad. It should go good with a couple of foods there, but um, wow, the tannins are there. The tannins are definitely there. Oh. Yeah, it's 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 rather tannic. Yeah, there are a lot of tannins in this wine. But it is a fairly bold wine, and it bold bold is good. Bold is good if it's not too bold. Uh, if it's not too bold, then then uh, I'm, you know, as you know, I've had a couple of wines that were a little too bold, and I really and and they're okay the first, when you first open them, they're okay. But then if you don't drink the whole bottle, if you store it away in the fridge, those are the kind of wines that you don't really want to store in the way in the fridge for a couple of nights because if you do that. And, and it really gets chilled, really gets cold in the refrigerator. Um, that it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna taste very good when they're that bold. It's not gonna, you, you're not. Well, some people might like it. I don't. It's not my preference. It's not my taste. But uh, it's, it's a yeah. This is a fairly tannic wine. Let's try it with some food. We're gonna pair it with some foods. Before we do that, let me go ahead to the uh, chat. Back to the chat. See what's going on. Proper Barn Star says, uh, oh, he's got a lot going on here. Let me see. Let me scroll up here. Uh, I grew up with the 1980s Chris Reeve Superman movies, and this new movie was is a nice callback to that movie era, but it also had some nice contemporary themes. Well, that's interesting. Uh, th th we're talking about Wonder Woman 1984, right? I like the original Superman movies, okay? I, I was not a big fan of Superman 4 too much, but uh, it, it, started, uh, it started getting a little wacky it towards the end uh, uh you know they try to inject too much comedy and stuff in, in in one of them i think the last one they did is that the one with richard pryor i thought richard pryor was really good i liked his character in the movie it's just that i think they were trying too hard to be funny um and, and I, it just didn't really fit the uh, superman movies too much now here i am going on off a tangent here I, I loved Richard Pryor movies. I used to, I, I'd seen most all of them that were out in the day, and I really liked it, uh, especially when he and Gene Wilder would team up, and I really liked that pairing. That was a really good good pairing with the two of them. Speaking of pairings, let's go take a look at this. Uh, let's t check out the pairing on this on this food. And Oh, he's got something else here. Uh, Barnstar says, Did you check out Square Guy's baking stream the other day, Rick? Homemade pie stands above anything else and it does no i actually missed the stream uh unfortunately and uh, i had to work and and he's excuse me he's sleeping when i'm working i'm working when he's sleeping i try to catch catch them i try to catch them whenever i can i happen to miss that one unfortunately 
But uh, there is the replay. I want to go back and, and check out the replay. I, I really, uh, I've been wanting my wife, she, to check out a couple of of their streams with the the baking ones because I really like the baking videos they do. It's very very good. Um, Barnstar says, "Which wines did you have for Christmas?" Well, um, I had, well, I opened a bottle. I think it was the last bottle of Rock Brook Pinot Noir that that we had. It was actually the last bottle that Wine Store had. And uh, I opened that up and had it was a Pinot Noir that I had. And uh, the rest of the family, well, I had a little bit of what they had later, but the rest of the family opened up a, um, it was a uh, Zinfandel. It was, it, was a, it was a white Zinfandel Blanc that, was, uh, that my wife loves. She, that's one of her favorite wines. And uh, they opened up. And they had that pretty much. You know, it was actually good wine. I had a little bit of it later. It was good. Let's go ahead and try it with the, with the, uh, what is this? Oh, it was lamb. Lamb, this is very good. I don't have any green jelly or something to go with the lamb, unfortunately. But eh, this should be still be good nonetheless. This is a wine that should go okay with lamb. It's a cab. Beef and lamb. Should be fine. We'll find out in just a moment. Mm. This is really good lamb, by the way. My wife marinated it. She marinated it. Marinated it. She marinated it. I don't know if anybody got that or not. My dad, my dad joke's kicking in. Um. Oh, yeah. It works. It works. Oh, let me, I'm going to have to try it again. I'm going to have to try it again. Let's try another piece of that. If you don't mind my ch chewing up my meat 30 times, it's my mom or my grandmother or somebody used to tell me to do. And I hardly ever did. <clears throat> but I'm doing it now. I don't know why. But I am. I'm not counting. No, I'm not counting. All right. Well. Wow. You know what? This wine goes really good with the lamb, and I think it's because of the high tannin, the, 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 the tannin in it. It's really, there's a lot of tannin in this wine, and uh, I think it's because of that and because of the higher acidity. I think it goes pretty good with this lamb. Very nice. Very nice. I like it. I like it. Good with the lamb. I'm, gonna, I'm going to clear the pot a little bit, and then we're going to, I'm going to try it with the spaghetti and meatballs, because you know what? Actually, a Pinot and a, or, a, or a Zinfandel or something like that would go good. But I, I have spaghetti and meatballs with Zins and Merlots and Pinot Noirs and Pinotages. And I've had it with white wines, Zinfandel Blancs, although I, I really prefer them with the reds. Cabs, too. Having it with cabs. It's a little on the cold side now because I've been sitting in the studio for... 40 minutes. Mm. Oh, yeah. The tannin helps the meat sauce. Works with the meat sauce. Not bad. Not bad. I'd say it goes, if it's meat sauce. Now, if it's just tomato sauce, the high acidity with the tomato sauce, it depends. If you, if you have tomato sauce and it's really highly acidic, I think this would probably be okay. I think with this, with the meat, I think it's better. Let me clear the palate one, one more time. And we're going to try it with the cheddar cheese that my wife loves so much. And it's good cheddar. And, of course, I have to put a little more wine in this glass. There's a little more wine. Let's try it with cheddar. Hey, I like it with your cheddar. Hmm. Now, this is a really creamy cheddar. I think it's a medium cheddar of some sort, but it is really creamy. And, uh, yeah, this is a good cheddar to begin with, but I think it mixes pretty well with this cab. It pairs pretty well with the cab. I, I like that. I'm going to uh, have a little bit of the cracker along with the water because the cheese kind of it's really creamy and gets in my mouth. So I'm going to try that. 
and we'll try it again. And this time we're gonna try it with, of course, the drum roll please. The Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. One of my favorite cheeses. This wine is actually pretty decent. Pretty good. Hmm. And I'm just saying it because my sister liked it. It's actually pretty good. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. We have another winner, folks. The Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. And this wine works pretty well. I like it. We're going to have a little bit more of this wine, I think. I think so. You know what, though? We've got the, the, the pie, but we're going to save that dessert for a little bit later. Because right now, I want to get back to the chat and see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Um, Facebook's kind of quiet, but it looks like most of the action is happening on... Oh, I have to, have to check YouTube. Okay, my wife's there. Um, most of the action is happening on Twitch. You know, Twitch has been... Um, I've been getting more activity on Twitch and, 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 and in Facebook lately. And, you know, I said some things before about not becoming a Twitch affiliate because I didn't want to alienate half my um, audience on Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else where I have this streaming too. But I'm, uh, I'm still giving this some thought and I'm trying to find a way to make this work where I can uh, become a Twitch affiliate and keep the others. I'm, I'm trying to sort this out. May have found a way. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to get with the Twitch folks and uh, see if uh, see if it's okay with them. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. I don't know. It's up in the air still. Barnstar says, uh, oh, I uh, missed something here, right? Proper Barnstar says, yes, Wonder Woman 1984. I loved Superman 2 with Zod and Superman 3 with Pryor as a kid, so I am biased for the slack, uh, slapstick themes in those movies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, they weren't bad. It's just I, I, I think the humor, I, I, I don't know. I think the, the, some of the humor and some of it didn't fit as well. It seemed a little awkward, I think, especially with, with, uh, with Christopher Reeves in it. You know, it just kind of, um, you know, you go to see Superman. You, I don't, at least for me, for me, when I went to see Superman, it was kind of, it had to be kind of straight lace, you know. Play every everybody's playing it all straight, and and of course I came from. Now here's the thing, I grew up on the George Reeves Superman. That's the TV show from back in the in the in the fifties and sixties, and uh, and of course that was humorous, but not really. Well, they threw a little humor in every once in a while, but um, it was really supposed to be played straight but it actually for this day and age it, it, it some of it comes off as is a bit more humorous than it really intended to be just because you know it was the age it was it was the the time you know the times have changed and and uh some of the stuff some of the premises seem a little on the silly side by today's standards and stuff but i still enjoyed watching those old superman shows i mean it, uh george reeves was 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 for for many people and always will be Superman. <laughs> um, Barnstar says, uh, mm, spaghetti sounds great with red wine. And yeah, in this case, it is. This is actually pretty good. It goes really well with this cab. Um, winner, winner, cheesy dinner. <laughs> yes. That's the uh, that's the, uh, tr the Trader Joe's Creamy Gouda. And he says, we love you on Twitch, Rick. Hope you become affiliate. Well, I'm like I said, Ed, I'm not going to hold my breath, but... Miracles can happen, I guess. Miracles happen, right? So getting back to uh, everything, everything's quiet everywhere else. I'll tell you what, let's do this then. Let's set the food aside for a moment, and let's go right into, because we still have more show to do, let's go right into the birthdays and the national days. So uh, before we do that, wow, this is, uh, wind up the nose here. <laughs> I love wine, but I don't want up my nose. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go right into the birthdays. And I have some birthdays to toast. And hopefully some of the birthday people are out there are watching. They're going to check in and see how uh, see their toast. My first birthday, I want to give a special birthday shout-out to my grandnephew, my grandnephew Alex, Alexander J., 
Alexander J. turned eight years old last Sunday. Last Sunday, this was uh, past Sunday, that was on the 20th. And uh, Alexander J., eight years old, young, too young to drink, but hey, he's not... I can always toast, you can toast anybody, anything. There's no... He's not drinking it, I am, okay? So I'm going to toast a little Alexander J. This is for Alexander J., eight years old. Happy, happy birthday, or happy belated birthday, because it was last Sunday. But I said happy birthday to to uh, your mom and your your uh, aunt uh, or your grandmother there on uh, last year uh, last year last week. <laughs> I, honestly, I have not had enough of this. Okay, here's to Alexander J. Bella Bellas, happy birthday to you. To little Alex, to to little Alex, and I hope Alex, I hope you and your sister. And your mom and uh, everyone in the family are all doing fine. Uh, Jenny, please uh, tell me how you're doing. If you're popping in later on, tell me how you, how you and the family are doing. I hope everybody's doing just fine. And I miss you guys. I really do miss you guys. Hope to see you again sometime soon. Um, another birthday toast I want to give. I want to give a birthday shout out to my friend Sharon. Sharon. Uh, Sharon Contron Harold. Sharon, uh, we go way, way back to our days at church uh, when I was a kid. But anyway, uh, to Sharon, uh, your birthday is this coming Sunday, tomorrow, tomorrow the 27th. I want to give a birthday shout out to Sharon, to you. Happy birthday, Sharon. Happy, happy birthday. And may you continue to have many, many, many more. And uh, I'm going to toast you again just because I can. To Sharon, Sharon Catron Harold. Happy birthday. There's one more birthday. There's also someone else who is also very special, a family member. Very, very dear person in my in my heart. And this is to my niece, Elisa. Elisa, you know, you know, of course, how dear you are to me and uh, how much I love and care about you and as well as your sister. I hope you and the family are doing fine. I hope you and, and your sister and your mom and your dad are all fine and are doing well. But uh, Elisa, Elisa's birthday is this coming Tuesday, the 29th. You thought I'd forget your birthday, didn't you? I would never forget your birthday. If I forget anyone's birthday, it's not going to be yours, okay? <laughs> I've known Lisa ever since uh, Lisa ever since she was born. I'm, uh, I haven't had enough of this yet. I've known Lisa ever since she was born, uh, just after she was born, and uh, she was uh, she was always just she and I were always very close. Uh, grow, you know, even when she was growing up, she and I were very close. Uh, we're and we're still close, even though we live far apart. But uh, she'll always be near and dear to my heart. I think of her more, uh, you know, she's she's my niece, but uh, often I, I think of her more as a daughter than, than just a niece. And she knows that. You know that, Lisa. Anyway, uh, here's to you, Elisa. I love you and happy, happy birthday. And I'm going to toast you again because, well, I'm Uncle Rick and I can. Here's to you, Elisa. Happy birthday. And may you have many, many, many more. Here's to my niece, Lisa Jane and Sean. I think that's got it for the birthdays for, for now. That's got it for the birthdays. Once again, we're drinking, if you're wondering, we're drinking the, uh, this is the, if I can still read it, <laughs> the Val de Salas Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. It is a French wine. It is from France. Tell all your friends, uh, I think this is a good wine. I like this wine. Tell your friends I recommend it. My sister recommends it. She had some. I, I think Tom, I, and he's not a white, uh, he's not a red wine person, but I think he probably liked it too. And, and uh, I, it comes with an, a number of recommendations. Uh, it's a highly rated. I like this wine. I do like this wine. Very good wine. Okay, so uh, we have some national days to toast. So listen, we have a few national days to toast, and then I'm going to show you some things I got for for uh, the holidays with some really special gifts. 
Uh, I think you'll enjoy seeing them. Before we do that, let me get back to the chat. Proper Barnstar says, uh, there's an interesting story behind director Richard Donner being fired from Superman 1 for going over budget, and Richard Lester took over as director for Superman 2 and refilmed some scenes with his slapstick scenes, like the Paris Niagara Falls scenes. Yeah, I remember those. But uh, Richard Donner uh, re-edited the movie nearly 30 years later with his original footage, and it was much more dark and serious. Yeah, I don't like it when it's too dark and serious. I mean, don't get me wrong there. I don't like it too dark and serious. The slapstick's good. I like a little bit of humor in there, but it, it, you kind of have to write the comedy in just right. Case in point, uh, an example uh, I, I think of that would be Die Hard, the ultimate Christmas movie, right? They say we watched it uh, last night, as a matter of fact. We watched it, uh, the family sat down and watched it. And, uh, and of course, I'd seen it before years ago, but um, we watched it again, and I just realized a lot of a lot of uh, interesting notes. I saw a documentary on how it was done, and uh, a lot of interesting things about this movie. That movie almost didn't get made, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, they were pretty much, um, you know, doing it by the skin of our, their teeth, more or less, on, on the budget they had. But interesting how they did some of that uh, with the movie and. Some of the humor that they threw in that when they when they originally wrote this thing it was originally written as a book with, a, with another uh, title, and uh, when it was converted into a movie, the director that took it over he said, "Well, this is serious. I want more humor in it." So the uh, they hired somebody to, to add more humor into the film, and of course, having Bruce Willis on board. They wanted Bruce Willis to add his own because Bruce Willis wasn't, you know, he wasn't really known for being a, a an action star at that time. He was really known for stuff like moonlighting and 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 more comedic stuff. So, you know, they, they were taking a risk, uh, you know, casting Bruce Willis as a as an action hero at the time. Now, of course, nowadays they realize what a, a good move it was, but. But they they felt the film was a little on the dark side, and they wanted to add some humor. So they added the, enough humor, and yeah, it's still kind of it's very serious and dark and violent. But the thing is, they add enough humor to kind of kind of you know give it a little you know, get people to breathe a little bit, and, and give people a little uh, you know take off some of that edge a little bit, and make it a little lighter. And uh, and Bruce Willis did that, and of course he ad libbed of some of his stuff. He actually did one or two of his own stunts too, as I recall. But a uh, uh, good movie, actually, a uh, classic film. And so uh, you know that's a prime example of movies where you kind of take the edge, you use the humor to take the edge off, but it has to fit. And in the case of Die Hard, it just kind of fit. The humor kind of fit what what was going on. It really did. Uh, but there are some films where they kind of force it, where they take a dark film, they try to force the humor in, and it doesn't really work too well. Um, yeah, you know, you, you, you kind of have to make it. There's some films where it doesn't really work that well. But Die Hard was one of those that, that worked out fine. So, um, and I'm not saying that, that, that I didn't like the humor in Superman, in, in the Superman movies. It's just that um, a couple of them, I think for some of them, I think, think they could have tweaked that a little bit in my opinion that's just my opinion uh, but they're still good I still enjoy the Superman films still enjoy them uh, to this day and uh, Barnstar says worth checking out the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2 I might have to check that uh, he says haha the Die Hard is a great Christmas movie yep yeah, yep yeah. and uh, he says oh cool that was Bruce's big break as a fun loving action star I guess that added humor helped him become successful yeah it did well he had plenty of practice in doing moonlighting you know so uh, and I'd watched a few episodes and I never really got, really got heavy in the moonlighting but it was kind of fun to watch the, the you know the 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 uh, you know the the interaction between him and Sybil Shepherd, and it was it was it was kind of fun. You know, watch watching that moonlighting. Yeah, I was back during my my time, <laughs> my time as it, as my kids say. So uh, where were we? Oh yes, uh, National Days. Let's go look at some National Days. Let's check out the National Days. All right. December 26th, that's today for another hour and 10 minutes, hour and 11 minutes. Uh, December 26th is National Candy Cane Day. Not surprising, right? National Candy Cane. Why, why is it not on the 24th or 25th? National Candy Cane Day. I like candy canes. Not 
crazy, but I don't go eat, you know, I don't sit there and gorge myself on them, but I like a candy cane every once in a while. Candy canes are cool. You know, they sell like, they make billions of those things, and they sell billions of candy canes every year. National Candy Cane Day. I'll, I'll drink to that. I'll eat to that. I'll drink to that. I don't have any candy canes. But if they did, you know, one of the things that candy canes are cool for doing is just sticking in your drink. That's right. You can put a candy cane, put a candy cane in your, if you're having a, uh, you know, like a, uh, maybe a, a, some kind of a, a hot uh, or a warm alcoholic drink, put a candy cane in it. it it's, it's almost like peppermint schnapps in a way. Tea, though. My favorite is with tea. You get a nice hot cup of tea and put a candy cane stick in the cu uh, cup of tea. And that, and let it sit for a couple of minutes. Give it a couple of minutes to sit, and, and and use the candy cane to swirl the tea around in. It is really, really good, really good. I, that's one that I highly recommend. Stick a can a candy cane stick in a cup of hot tea, and you can use Earl Grey. Or you could use uh, peppermint tea if you want. Green tea, I don't know. I don't know if too many things that go into green tea. I wouldn't even put milk in green tea. That green tea is something you drink by itself. It's good. I like green tea, but it's just not my, uh, not not for mixing other flavors. And in, in my opinion, but a lot of other teas will work. You know, like an orange pico or um, you know, or Earl Grey or, or something that's uh, an English breakfast tea, that kind of thing, or uh, you know. Or peppermint tea, it's fine. You put more peppermint in it, really make it a super peppermint tea. Swirl it around, keep it in there, and uh, it, that's a nice addition for a tea. I really, we ought to do an episode just where we're drinking tea because this is drink with Rick. We don't have to drink wine, we don't have to drink beer, we could drink coffee or tea. That's something else I'm going to bring up here later towards the end of the show. We're going to talk about that just a little bit if I have if we have time. Anyway, uh, I'm dry, I'm yeah, you know, I'm going off on a tangent. All right, uh, today is also, aside from being National Candy Cane Day, it is also National Thank You Note Day. Of course, you're getting gifts on the holidays. Today is the day that you send the thank you notes for those days, for those gifts. How many people actually send thank you notes after they receive a, a gift? And how many of them are, are busy going to the store the day after uh, the holiday and, and uh, returning their gift for something else, so whether it be exchanging it for something they like uh, better or for cash. Uh, of course, if you if your gift it happens to be a... <laughs> We've had this conversation already. Why am I bringing it up again? If, if your gift happens to be a fruitcake, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, there's no giving that back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, maybe next year. There's always next year. You could always rewrap it and re-gift it. People do that with, we would have this conversation, I know. But people re-gift uh, fruitcakes, okay? There are fruitcakes that are probably 10 years old that people have done nothing but re-gift and re-gift and re-gift every year. And they just sit around and they say, oh, I don't want this thing. Let's re-gift it to this guy. And then he has it. Oh, yeah, wow, a, a, a fruitcake. And I'll wait around for New Year's and re-gift it to somebody else. And it gets passed around. Before you know that fruitcake's been passed around to like 15 people. And then somebody somewhere decides you're going to have a slice. And they realize the thing is 10 years old. And they're sorry they ever did. And, uh, they have to toss it. <laughs> uh, memories. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going there. Uh, so uh, National Thank You Note Day. Good day to remember to send a thank you note for those who gave you really nice gifts, even if it's a fruitcake. Okay? National Winers Day. They're not talking about this kind of wine. Okay? They're, they're, this is the W-H-I-N-E-R. Like, like our dog, like Tommy's dog, who's a little whiner. Um, he likes to whine a lot. But, uh, you know, he's Winers Day. People who complain about stuff. This is National Winers Day. If you complain about stuff, I don't know why it's National Winers Day. Uh, I don't know. There's something else to, to, to wonder about. Okay, National Winers Day. And then in, the, in Canada, it's for Canada, it's National Boxing Day. National Boxing Day for Canadians. As to all those days, I'll drink to that. Except National Winers Day. 
December 27th, which is tomorrow, in about another hour and six and a half minutes. Uh, December 27th is National... <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? I, I, I broke these down. I didn't even see it coming. Okay. I don't remember. December 27th is National Fruitcake Day. National Fruitcake Day. All right, we already had the fruitcake discussion. I'm not going there anymore. We've already been there, done that. Here's the National Fruitcake Day. I jumped the gun on that one, didn't I? Okay, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time. Probably won't be the last. December 28th, which is Monday. Now, and I'm concluding this because there are a number of national days on Monday, but I'm going to, there's one national day on Monday that, I, that is of great interest to me that I really want to toast because I'm part of that, in a way. Monday is National Short Film Day. National Short Film Day. And I'm going to read this. I took this directly, and Marlo, forgive me for doing this, but uh, uh, Marlo Anderson, who is the uh, CEO of NationalDayCalendar.com, this is where all these come from, NationalDayCalendar.com, uh, they have a page that uh, describes, that talks about National Short Film Day and explains what that's all about. I'm going to read that, okay? This is taken from... For, for full disclosure, this is taken from Marlo Anderson's uh, nationaldaycalendar.com site. It says, on December 28th, National Short Film Day commemorates the day the motion picture industry was born when the Lumiere brothers projected a program of short films to a public audience for the first time. I'm still reading. This is a quote from nationaldaycalendar.com. In 1895, at the Grand Café in Paris, two brothers sparked the world's love of cinema, Auguste and, and Louise uh, Lumiere, Lumiere, I should know my French better than that, but I don't. Uh, let me try that again. In 1895 at the Grand Café in Paris, two brothers sparked the world's love of cinema. Auguste and Louis Lumiere brought that fascination to life first in a paying audience of 33 customers. That day, the film pioneers presented 10 short films, each about 50 seconds in length. To the amazement of all those in attendance, the brothers captured everyday events on film and played them back as moving pictures. The experience of watching movies came alive that day, and it all began with those first 10 short films. Today's short films come in many genres, lengths and styles. They entertain us with animation, fantasy, comedy, and drama. They also inform and educate us through documentary subjects that provide revealing insights into real life stories we may have never known before. And as it says, it concludes here, nationaldaycalendar.com, in short, short films continue to move us just as they did that first time over 120 years ago. Now, why is this important to me? Is because I've made, a, I was a filmmaker in another life, I've made some short films of my own. Some of you have seen them. If you haven't, you can go, uh, actually on Twitch, you can go to some of the past episodes of uh, Drink With Rick and you can watch, because I have presented some of my short films. I've presented uh, at least one of the animated films. I have a couple more here, uh, animated films, that I'm going to show uh, during the next season, next year, of Drink With Rick, hopefully, uh, as well as a feature film. Uh, I have... Uh, presented a couple of other short films, and uh, I think most of you have seen those. If you haven't, go check them out. Go check them out, uh, the short films that I have uh, presented in the past. Check those episodes out. You know, I'm sure you'll enjoy them. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Uh, let's see, and, and I think that I'm going to toast that. I'm going to toast the, the uh, National Short Film Day. It's National Short Film Day. Okay, and uh, let's see what's going on in the chat. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm, I'm looking through the chat here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I'm, uh, it's scrolling down on me here a little bit. Uh, Proper Barnstar says, I'll send you a digital thank you note live. I read through the dad joke book you sent and posted a bunch of food slash cooking related jokes throughout Square Guy's baking stream and many of them were a big hit thanks again rick <laughs> well you're welcome you're more than welcome hey you won you won fair and square right and uh i'm sure that square guy appreciated that <laughs> i'm sure he did 
How's he doing? I hope that he and Darcy are doing well. Uh, it says, uh, Barnstar says, please, no more fruit uh, cakes. And Algorith is in the chat. It's great to see you, Algorith. I'm, I'm happy to see you here. Tell me how you're doing and how was your holiday. Uh, Algorith says, hard candy lasts longer for sure. It does. It really does. And you know what? That's the thing. I think there's a little bit more value in a hard candy than a soft candy or something. Wouldn't you agree? Would you, you know, sometimes a hard candy is cheaper than the soft candies, but they do last longer. So you can... As a matter of fact, and I, they still do this in, in the, I guess they still do this in the bank. So the last time I was in, in the bank, it was, it was during COVID. But uh, uh, before COVID started, they were still handing out, you know, they had a, uh, the bank I had had a, a little uh, a thing full of lollipops. And they would, you know, you could get the free lollipops. And you can't be free, right? You can't be free. But I tell you what, you could, if, if, you, if you do it, played it right, a lollipop in your mouth, it was it was great for for I mean sometimes it can last fifteen minutes or, or twenty minutes for for a, for a hard candy like that. Um, it's good value. I think it's a better value than some other candies where you just sit there you eat the candy. You know you pay a buck. Look at this. You pay a dollar twenty five, dollar fifty, whatever it is for a candy bar these days. You chocolate candy bar. It's gone after a few minutes. You eat it. You get some hard candy. You put it in your mouth and you've got it for a while. It lasts a long time. Jawbreakers. Jawbreakers are really good cheap candy to, to buy that you can really enjoy for a long term. I love candy. I love candy. I, I eat too much candy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a sap for candy. What can I say? Uh, but you're right. You're right, Algorith. Uh, hard candy uh, lasts longer for sure. Uh, Pick and Tone says hello and right back at you. Glad to see you in the chat. Welcome, Pink and Tone. Uh, is it Pink and Tone? Did I, did I say, did I say that correctly? Barnstar says uh, Square Guy and Darcy are doing well. They're visiting relatives over the holidays. Great. Square Guy and, uh, let's see, where is he? Oh, uh, Pink and Tone says greetings from Argentina. Do you speak Spanish? Poco. Muy poco. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. But greetings for Argentina. Wow, it's great to see you here. Stick around, please. I'm glad you speak English. Um, my Spanish is really not so good. It's embarrassingly bad. Uh, just like my French, I can understand it more than I can speak it. Uh, just like my, my French. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm glad you're here. And from Argentina, you know. Argentinian wines, wines from Argentina are absolutely awesome. I have had, we have several, we have more than several, we have a number of wines from Argentina that I have up here that we have tried that are absolutely fabulous wines. Great Argentina wines. Some of the wines from Argentina are really awesome. And you know what? I've met some other people from Argentina on here, from Twitch and from other places here that uh, they're also fabulous people. They're great people. Welcome to the chat. Uh, Pinkenton says, did you drink the Malbec wine? Uh, yeah, I, I, the, uh, well, I've had a few Malbecs from Argentina uh, here, I think, back there. And, uh, and I've, I've had a few of them. As a matter of fact, I think most of the ones, well, not most of them, I think several of them were, for, for, were Malbecs. And uh, let's see, let's go check out Facebook for just a moment and see what's going on Facebook. It's very quiet on Facebook tonight. Really quiet. Very interesting. Huh. So uh, the action's happening on Twitch. You folks are killing it tonight. The action's happening all on Twitch. How about that? It's Twitch for the win. Twitch folks for the win. Uh, before we end this stream tonight, stick around, folks. If you, you, those of you, especially those of you who are uh, Twitch streamers, stick around for a few moments. I've got a little thing for you. But until we get there, I want to show, show you, I want to share with you some special gifts that I received for the holidays. I want to show you the first thing I received. One of the, uh, well, several things. I, I received several things. One of them, this here right here, this hit lights. This is, if you're not familiar with the, what the hit lights are, they're a string of uh, LED lights they use to decorate things with, you know, put them back in your TV and 
in your room and all that. You know what I'm talking about, the LED str uh, string lights, the ribbon lights and stuff that you can light up, and they often come with a remote that you can change colors and things like that. Very decorative lights. Those are very cool. My son Tommy, you know Tommy of Cube Command, uh, uh, he does the Cube Command podcast for gaming and uh, movies and, and uh, pop culture. He gave me that for, for Christmas. He gave me that for the holidays. And really great gift. Now, I know why he gave that to me, because I'm planning to do some things after Season 2 of uh, the, the, uh, the wine stream is done uh, in, in February. I'm going to be redoing a few things. I'm going to be sprucing up the set a little bit back there. I'm going to be sprucing some things up. And one of the things I want to do was add some lighting, do some real cool mood lighting with the LED lights back there. And um, I'm letting you in on this because you're part of this stream. You are part of the stream. You're part of the show. Okay? It's just much your show as it is mine, really. Um, and he caught wind of this. He knew. He knew what my plans were. He caught wind of it. And he beat me to the punch. I, was, I had some, some lights that I was, I'd been doing a lot of research on some of these lights and was trying to figure out how, you know, how I was going to do that. He beat me to the punch and he says, you know, Dad, I know you need the lights. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head it off and pass and and get get you some of those lights. So he actually got me the lights. So I have the lights for this set. The, so I'm gonna be uh, at, at the end of the uh, season here. I'm gonna be redoing that and I'm gonna be using his lights. It's gonna be that is so awesome. That is an awesome gift from my son, uh, Tommy. That's really really awesome, uh, and I do appreciate it. It's much appreciated. My wife um, gave me a couple of gifts. Oh, well, I don't know if I have. Do I have no, enough room to show this? Look at what she gave me. I gotta have another swig of this. Hold on. Picking it says, uh, "You travel to Argentina. If you come, you have to come to Mendoza to eat meat and wine." Boy, that would be an awesome thing to do. I'm not really much of a, a, a traveler per se because I don't like planes too much. But if I do go to Argentina, definitely going to have the meat wine. <laughs> definitely going to have – and and I definitely want to tour the, uh, the the wineries in Mendoza. I really want to tour the Mendoza uh, wineries because I've heard so much about them. And I have several wines from Mendo you know, that we've had from Mendoza that are just awesome. Really, really appreciate it. So, uh, Asado Messi Maradona. I, I, if, if I ever get down to Argentina, I definitely want to check that out. That would be a really cool, a really cool thing to do. Um, anyway, so uh, where would we? Oh, yes, I want to show you this. I have to show it to you here. I had pictures of some of the other items, but I have to show you this because I couldn't really get in a picture. They gave me this. They gave me this uh, Encanto Chardonnay Pinot Grigio. And uh, it's a 2019. And my wife got it for me because she, she knows now I'm a red, I prefer reds over whites. And pic, uh, Picanto, if, if, uh, just to let you know, that's one of the reasons I like Malbecs. I prefer the reds over the whites. Although I do like a good white every once in a while. I do like good white wine. Uh, but this one, uh, and she knows that I like prefer the reds, but she saw the bottle and she saw she saw it and she said, oh, man, this is an awesome bottle. This is an awesome looking bottle. And you know what? I 100% agree with her. This is an awesome looking bottle of wine. <laughs> Uh, no matter what the wine is, like I couldn't be water in there for all I care. I, I, it's okay. It's okay because man, this this bottle is pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to use this uh, on my set here and keep it around just because I don't know. Maybe I'll open it up and drink it one day. But maybe we should try it. We should probably try it one day. I can't drink it by myself. I'm going to need some help. Maybe one of these days I'll have a party and open this thing up and drink it all together. I don't know. But this is a Pinot Grigio. This is, uh, wow, this, uh, where's this from? This is uh, imported, imported by Dequino Italian Importing Company. So it's an Italian wine. This is an Italian wine. It's a product of Italy. Okay, it's a product of Italy. 1.5 liters, alcohol 12% by volume. But this is an awesome bottle. 
Uh, that's just really cool for display. You know, it's really good too. We empty this bottle and we stick some of those LED lights down in it. Ah, oh, that'd be nice. Stick that in the background. Really, really cool uh, display. Nice ambience. I think this is very cool. This is an awesome gift. Uh, it was a really awesome gift. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Chi, for this really nice gift. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Uh, the, uh, let me check the uh, rest of the chat here. I don't want to forget. Oh, my sister Jean is in the chat, and she says, I have faith in you. I think you could do it. Uh, are you talking about going to Argentina? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> How you doing, Gina? It's great to see you. I'm glad to see you in the chat. It's always great to see my sister, uh, either of my sisters, in the chat, and it's awesome. My wife, she says, no, Gina, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a big... Uh, look, I've flown. I've flown several times. I've flown when I've had to. Uh, you know what? The, the first time I ever actually got on a plane was thanks to Gina and Edwin. My sister Gina, my brother-in-law, Edwin, uh, and they, they bought me a ticket to go, because they knew that I wasn't going to get on a plane to fly up there anyway. Uh, <laughs> so they bought me a ticket to go up to, to see them when they were up uh, north. And, and uh, my, my, uh, my niece Haley was, had, had just been born. She was, I think she was what, uh, she wasn't even a year old. She was like uh, nine months, maybe ten months. And... Uh, and they bought me a ticket to go up there and stay with them for a while. And it was really cool. It was a really awesome trip. And I'm glad I went. I'm glad I went. And I'm always thankful to them for that trip. But uh, uh, getting on the plane was uh, a little bit nerve-wracking. I, I drank all the way up there. <laughs> I had a few, I had a couple of martinis, a few drinks, and I passed out. I said, wait me, wait me when we land. And uh, if we don't land then uh, it won't matter. <laughs> I won't care at that point. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was good. Um, Gina says, I'm talking about drinking the bottle. Oh, drinking the whole bottle. You want me to drink this whole bottle by myself? Oh, no, please. Um, she's trying to get me to cut down a little bit. <laughs> and I have. I have cut down quite a bit in the last few weeks. But, uh, oh, no, I don't even want to attempt that. Look, I have, a, I have a holiday story about another bottle of wine that I did not bring up here. But, uh, you know, I've, I've often talked about my nephew, Lester. Lester Bellabaus. By the way, we did toast his son, the, the, the person, the young man, the 8-year-old Alex, Alexander, who I toasted earlier for his birthday, um, that's, uh, that's his son. Um, Lester Balabalos is, uh, was my nephew and, um, he, uh, he was married to my niece, um, Jenny, Jenny Pearl and, uh, Lester left us way too early. And I, I've, I've made a note of this, but, you know, I've, I've talked about this before and I don't want to get too, too dour about it, but I do want to give a special toast to Lester because I'm thinking about him now. Uh, Lester uh, was was very special to everybody, all of us. Just an awesome, awesome guy, and uh, I was always Uncle Rick to him, and and he just he always treated me. He treated everybody just so great, but he was just always so super cool to me, and um, really just an awesome guy. Lester uh, lost his life, and I, I really need to mention this here. Le Lester lost his life to a drunk driver. Um, on uh, on uh, the uh, the highway on uh, in Florida, this was uh, some years ago, a few years ago, and, uh, and so so we miss him. We all miss him terribly. I miss him terribly. Just just a great guy. Um, but Lester, and I don't mean to. I wasn't mean to put a downer on this. I, I really wasn't. But but Lester, um, <clears throat> where was it going with this? Oh yeah, Lester and I. That was one of the good stories. Lester and I, uh, we were down there for the holidays. We all got together for the holidays at my uh, sister-in-law's house, at Benny's house, for a big, big get-together. We stayed there for, uh, was, we were there for a few days. In Florida, this was in, in, in Orlando. We were there for a few days. And my sister, my sister-in-law had purchased this huge, huge bottle from Sam's Club. It was, uh, it was a bottle of, uh, it was a bottle of Chianti. 
but it was a 1.5 liter bottle. It was it was this. It was, it was this big. It wasn't didn't look like this, but it was this big. It was a huge bottle. I have one of those downstairs, a different year, but one very much like it. I should have brought it up, but I didn't. But uh, this thing was uh, really really big. And uh, <clears throat> since we were there for a few days, not doing anything, not having anything else to do really, um, <laughs> Les and I. <laughs> Les and I, uh, you know, we, we kind of looked at this thing. My, my sister-in-law, Benny, uh, had this bottle there. And I, and I said, are you going to open that thing up just for show? No. And she says, I, I opened it up for us to drink it. I'm like, you're serious. You're going to drink that whole big bottle? And she goes, well, uh, I don't know. You can drink it if you want. So Les and I kind of looked at each other and we said, hey, you know, let's open this thing and, and see, see what we can do with it, how far we can go. Well, we opened that bottle of wine, and um, it took us it took us uh, pretty much all two or three days to drink. It took us a whole weekend to drink it, but we did. We finished the whole bottle. Now, Benny Benny did have a glass. She had one glass, and nobody else touched it. But Les and I, Lester and I, sat there and we drank. The two of us drank this whole big bottle of wine by ourselves. Uh, in a couple of days. Why am I telling you this? This is embarrassing. It was a great time. Like I tell you, my my, I miss my nephew. <laughs> He's a pretty awesome guy. A drinking buddy too. But here's to Lester. Here's to Lester. Bless his heart. Here's to Lester. One of the many happy memories I have of... Uh, Lester and me uh, getting together and, you know, doing what we had to do. But Gina says, um, uh, the whole bottle, no, Gina, Gina, I tell you what, why don't you come down here and help us drink this, okay? Please, I challenge you, come down here and help me drink this bottle of wine. Please, help me drink. It's a white wine, too. Um, I don't know, bring, uh, I don't know, bring some friends with you. I don't know, let's all, help me, help me drink this thing. Help me drink it. You know, bring Joe with you. Bring Joanne with you. Dude, she'll help drink. She'll help us drink this. <laughs> bring Joanne with you. She says, I don't want to drag Rick to the ER this time. Uh, Gina says, that's how I got through my first few flights. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. Same here. <laughs> Just about every flight. Uh, that's, how, that's how I did it. And, um, you know, drink, and just drinking and then just going and taking a nap. Uh, let's see. Picante has, uh, how many years are you living in the U S how Christmas happened? Um, I've been living in the U S all my life, really. Um, uh, and, and, uh, a barn star says, uh, ah, a little, I was born in the U S I was born in Florida, actually, uh, to, to answer your question. Barn star says, ah, a little insight into the Rick of the past. Yeah, I, I have a lot of stories. I'm not going to tell them on a night. We'd be here all night, and I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to do that to me. CM Sitter says, Dad, you got to show the other gift. I will. She's excited to see that. And Barn star says, I'm limit. Uh, Barnstar says, I'm intimidated by the bottle. I didn't think a glass bottle could be that big. Believe it or not, Barnstar, it can be bigger. Trust me, it can be a lot bigger than that. Uh, but uh, it was a very nice gift. Okay, uh, Sam Sander wants me to show you some other gifts. So we're going to show you some other gifts. We're going to show you, I'm going to show you a really, really special gift. You ready? Here it is. What is that? I'm going to tell you what this is. This is a very, very special gift given to my daughter, Tia, uh, given by my daughter, Tia, to me, my daughter, Sam Sander. Okay. This is what it is. This gift is a wine glass holder, I guess you would call it. A wine glass display, a wine glass holder. She made that by hand. This was her gift to me for the holidays. My daughter Tia made, and she's very talented. You know, she's very, very talented. Uh, if you were watching at the very beginning of the wine stream, you saw the special opening for Drink with Rick. Uh, that was hers. She did that. Um, as well, but this is her gift to me. It is a wine glass holder. She spent quite a bit of time on it. I'm going to give you a closer look at this thing because this is pretty awesome. Here's a here's a closer look at it. This is a, from one view. 
uh, the leaves, the tree, the tree that comes up and, and, and cradles the glass, and then the leaves there. It's just really, I mean, she did this by hand, and it's a one of the kind. This is definitely a one of the kind thing. Now, if you think this is awesome, check out the, from this other angle. If you take it from the back angle, this is a waterfall. The waterfall on the back, on the rock, you got a rock back there and a waterfall coming down from the rock on the back of it. Uh, which is really really cool. I really I was really impressed with it. Here's the here's the back side of it. This is what it looks on the back side. The tree coming around the branches, the the trunk and, and the branches coming up to once again to cradle the wine glass. And uh, this is uh, I got another shot of this here too. This is uh, this is the uh, the front looking at the front side of it. This is just an awesome, awesome gift, and um, I am I, I was I was very nearly brought to tears when I saw this because I, I know how much work she put into it, how much time she spent on it, and it's just really I mean it's just it's just uh, awesome the the time that she's put into it. It's right back here, as a matter of fact. It's got a wine glass. You can hold a wine. It's it's you know you have it without the wine glass, and you put the, you, you set the wine glass down in it, but it's a wine glass holder. It's right back there. Uh, in, the, in the back, you can see it there. Um, really, I mean, you know what? They, they say, you know, people buy stuff, buy a gift here. And there is nothing, there's nothing that compares to getting a gift that is handmade, personally handmade, by someone who, who cares about you or someone that, who loves you. And, and it's, it's, it's something that, something very, very personal about a handmade gift that is just, a, you just can't beat it. You can't. And my daughter has given me a number of handmade gifts, and it just uh, shows the love she has, and it, and it shows also shows her talent. That's a one of a kind thing. But it's and I've showed you a few of those in the past. But I was really humbled by that gift, and uh, to 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 Tia, I want to say thank you, thank you very much. It is much appreciated, and I love it. I love it, and I will treasure it always. I will always treasure that gift. Just an awesome gift, really. Um, my wife also gave me a, another gift. There was, there was another gift here that I've got. It's actually sitting right there, if you can see it right there, which is kind of cool, which is a pretty cool uh, gift. Uh, I want to show that to you, too. This is, uh, this is a bot. When I opened it up, I thought, okay, this is a, a you know, I, I thought maybe she was giving me another one of those uh, personal boxes, you know, where you store a lot of your personal effects, like uh, watches and rings and, that, that kind of thing. But that's not what this is. What this is, is uh, if you open it up, it is a kit. It's a wine kit. <laughs> Getting back to the wine, it's all wine themed, isn't it? It was a very nice wine kit. I'm going to show you uh, top down. It came with a whole, uh, whole bunch of uh, this is the remember if you remember my wife purchased uh, very beginning of the show we started doing the wine stream she purchased she found one uh, of these at uh, a uh, this was at a uh, an estate sale let's say and we used it for quite a while we used this for about a year until it finally broke and didn't work anymore so she she uh, went and purchased Another one, she went and purchased this one this outright, and it's just a complete kit. It's a really nice kit. It's got the, it's got the uh, mechanical corkscrew in it, and it has uh, the wine stopper, and uh, the, the, uh, it has a few other items in it. It has this ring in there. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if that's uh, something that uh, I use for the wine. It's, I'm going to have to look into it, but uh, or maybe it's something I'm supposed to throw into to the, to the volcano in Mordor or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's the one ring to rule them all. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, I have to go look at it. I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with that, to be honest. Maybe Gina can tell me. She, she's up on a lot of the, the wine stuff there. Uh <laughs> Gina says, uh, by the way, Gina says, Joe would. Joe would come with us and help us drink this wine? I hope so. She says, I love that. Well done, Tia. Uh, it's a vine. Yes, it is a vine. It's a great vine bringing up the wine. I like that. I like that. And that's probably what Tia was, was thinking. Uh, she says, uh, I think Gina's trying to say gorgeous. Gorgeous. Auto-destruct won't let me type. 
How much wine have you had tonight, Gina? <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course, but no, maybe not. I don't know. How much wine have you had tonight? Um, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's much appreciated. It's the mother, the, and Gina says it's the mother of the vine, in parentheses, cradling the baby, the wine. Wow. That, now, that's profound. That's a profound statement. It's the mother, the vine, cradling the wine. Wow. You know, I didn't even think about that. Let me go back and take a look at that, that uh, image one more time. That, uh, that's, that's something. Yeah. Okay. The vine cradling the wine. Hmm. Yeah, I have to. Th yeah, that could be very profound. I like that. I like that theme. Very cool. Very cool. But it's much appreciated, by the way. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. Uh, my sister is very perceptive. She's very. Both of my sisters are very, very intelligent. But uh, my, my, you know, my sister Gina is very perceptive. Uh, Sam Sanders. Uh, let's see. Well, I've got to scroll up this chat a little bit. Uh, Seam Sanders says, Dad, you got to uh, show the other. Oh, I did. Okay, I did that. And, uh, okay, I scrolled up too high. There we go. Uh, he says, Barnstar says, oh, that's incredible. Love it, Seam Sender. And Seam Sender says, I don't think it's my best work, but honestly, I think it turned out pretty nice. Um, I think it was an awesome piece of work. You know, if you haven't seen their other stuff, I've, sh I've shown some of their other things in the past. What, what do I have here? Oh yeah, I gotta show this again. If you've never seen this, this is a gift she made with me. I think she she made this for me on Father's Day. I, if you've never seen this, you have to see this. This is a picnic she made. A uh, this was some years back. She was um, still in her teens, but she made this uh, from clay that she fired. I think she fired this uh, in a kiln or something. But it is a picnic scene. When and that the the kind of balding guy is me, of course, and then. Uh, uh, the 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 one with the black hair sitting down at the picnic table is Tia, and then uh, and the one with the kind of brownish hair is uh, Chi, and then Tommy's right next to me, and then we have Cosmo the dog in the corner. Uh, I think he's eating something, but we're having a picnic, and uh, really just just an awesome uh, awesome little thing. Now here's the thing about that little. Here's another angle of it. The picnic. She made this for me. I think it was for Father's Day one year. And the cool thing about this, the really cool thing about this, pretty amazing. You know how big this thing is? This is literally, uh, if you look at the uh, the green area there, that's just a little over the size of a quarter, between the size of a quarter and a half dollar. This thing is really, really small. It's tiny. It's a miniature. This is a miniature scene. And uh, yeah, this thing is between the size of a quarter and the size of a half dollar big. Seriously, that's how big it is. Really, really small. So uh, she, she's done a lot of amazing works of art. Now, if you notice here, the very beginning, the very beginning of the show, I'm going to show this again. She did this too. Uh, I commissioned her to do this, and she did this. That's this, the, the, the title for tonight, uh, probably also for the New Year's special, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But she did that too. That was her work as well. Tia said she's a very, very talented, amazing artist, and she will do commissions. She'll do commissions for anybody. She'll do commissions for you. Uh, Gina says, "Oh, it's gorgeous, Tia. Wow, that's some fine work. Like what that guy who does mini dollhouse architecture. Yes, she has dabbled in so many different types of art." And she's done a lot of miniature work. She has quite, yeah, she is quite, Gina says she's quite talented. Yes, she is. She's quite talented. And she undersells herself. She really does. She will do commissions for people. She has uh, some stuff, I think she's done on Etsy and, and some other places. But she does, uh, she has a website, tiasavoya.com, which really isn't much on there just yet because we're still sort of setting that up. But um, she has done a lot of commission work for people, and people really love her work. She's, she's done some, some fabulous artwork. And, yeah, I've been trying to get her to, to do some stuff because, you know, a lot of podcasters really want people, uh, they're looking for somebody to do album art for their podcast and things like that. I'll tell you. But she's, uh, she'd have it made just in that little niche alone. She'd have it made. 
But uh, if you're interested, you can you can uh, contact her. CM Cinder, she's on Twitch. CM Cinder. Oh, by the way, if you're on Twitch and you go to the to my Twitch page, my channel, my Twitch channel, all the artwork on the Twitch channel for the heading up for all the different sections and things like that. That's her work. That's her artwork. She she did all that. That's 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 Tia, and she's done all the. The uh, work for uh, Cube Command, the, the Tommy's Cube Command podcast, and things like that. She's done the artwork for that. So, and she does all the artwork for the uh, uh, Drink with Rick. Uh, so, yeah, she's uh, she's done quite a bit of quite a bit of work. I would say pretty much professionally at this point. Um, CM Center says I'm trying to resume the work on my custom uh, Nendoroid stuff. You can also contact me through email at cmcinderu at gmail.com. So there you go. If you want to contact uh, Tia for uh, any any kind of uh, any kind of work, uh, any uh, you know that sort of thing, she does any commission work. You can contact her at cmcinderu at gmail.com. So, there you go. Uh, we have a couple other things. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, it's getting late. Well, it's getting late. It sure is. We're having an open chat, which is good. A couple of things before we go. Um, and real quick, I want to mention, I don't want to go long on this, but I want to mention real quick, you know, of course, winter is here. And we're having winter storms. We've already had a couple blow through. We had a nor'easter last week that came through. Hit some places pretty hard. Please, please, please get a weather radio. Get a weather radio. Uh, you know I'm big on weather radios. Go to ready.gov. That's a government website. Look down the list of weather preparedness, of any kind of preparedness. Get yourself prepared with, uh, for a hurricane or earthquakes or, or tornadoes or whatever it is. Any uh, storms, winter storms, ice storms, any kind of weather event, whatever it is. Go to ready.gov. Get yourself an emergency preparedness kit. Everybody should have an emergency preparedness kit. We have one. We have down, one downstairs. We have a uh, back sack that we have ready. We keep in the closet with emergency gear in there in case we get caught in some kind of a major emergency. And with at least 72 hours you know, for provisions and things like that, just in case. Because you never know what's going to happen. And you don't know how long it's going to take if it's something really major you don't know how long it's going to take for help to arrive or for emergency responders to get there to rescue you. So you, you, you really need to have, you need to be prepared. It's a very important. Go to ready.gov, have that emergency kit uh, ready. One of the things on the, uh, uh, on the kit is a uh, weather radio. Of course, you can go to pi2wayradios.com, pi2wayradios.com to get a weather radio. Weather radios are very important to have. I have one right here on, in front of me. I have a number of radios, in fact. <laughs> That's kind of what I do. But uh, go to buy 2 .com. If you use the promo code WINESHOW, W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W, W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W, WINESHOW, at checkout, you can save 5% off your entire order. That's WINESHOW, okay? Use it. Use it. Please use it. This is for you, um, my friends, relatives, my, uh, th th those who, who watch me and listen to me on Drink with Rick. This is for you. Now, for full disclosure, I am the product manager for Y2 Air Radios, have been for 10 years. I'm not making any extra money doing this. I'm, they're not paying me for doing this, for this. I mean, they pay me for doing other stuff, uh, my job. <laughs> but I'm not getting paid extra for doing this, okay? This is just something I'm doing because I'm a ham operator. I'm I'm part of the, uh, uh, the national... You know, uh, weather spotter. I'm, I'm, I'm a weather spotter, and uh, I'm, I'm big on weather radios. We, we, you know, my son and I both uh, have uh, equipment here for that sort of thing, and that's that's what that's one of the things I'm interested in. That's one of my interests, and and I'm as a personal thing, I, I'm really interested in make sure everybody's prepared. So that. Promo code is for you, given to me by my employers, by Two Air Radios, but I don't make any extra on this, okay? I'm not. Just for full disclosure to the FCC, FTC and the FCC, if, <laughs> if necessary. <clears throat> so, um, but mostly FTC. So that's, that's that. Okay, having said that, with that out of the way, we're going to get a summary here, but first a couple of things I want to talk to you about. 
Okay, a uh, couple things that I wanted to, to talk, and especially to, to folks, not just on Twitch, but also on Facebook. Um, I, you know, we've, we've been doing a lot this past year. This is the last episode. I'm going to have a little bit more of this. I'm going to have a little more of this. This is the last episode of the wine stream for 2020, okay? For 2020. And um, we've got one more episode for the year, though, because we're going to do a special. Now, this, uh, this uh, coming Thursday night, which is going to be, uh, what is it going to be? <laughs> Maybe I had too much. This coming Thursday night, which is going to be New Year's Eve. We're going to have a special New Year's Eve Drink with Rick celebration. I hope you join me for that. This is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to just uh, have a good time. Uh, we're, we're not going to st stick around for till midnight for the ball to drop. We're just going to be around for an hour or so, just kick back and relax. Just have a good time. Reflect on the year. There's a couple of things I'm going to give away. I'm going to give away some things. I'm going to give away uh, a calendar, National Day calendar for 2021 uh, from Marlo Anderson, CEO of nationaldaycalendar.com, a friend of mine. We're going to give away a couple other things, too. Uh, my wife, actually, he, she wants to give away. She's got some. She gave me this thing. She gave me some of these, some of these uh, corkscrews, and she wants me to give away some of these. So we're going to give away some of these, whatever I have here. We might give away a, uh, one of the dad joke books as well. We may do that. We'll see how that works. But we're going to do some giveaways. We're going to have some fun. I want you to be there and, 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 and be part of it. Get in the chat because we're, what we're going to do is we're going to give some things away. But I want you to tell me your New Year's resolution. Give me your New Year's resolutions during that time. The best ones, we'll pick the best ones. Winners, we'll get, uh, we'll get uh, well, maybe a loser too. We'll, get, we'll still win something. How about that? So please join me. It'll be at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, December 31st, 2020, for the Drink with Rick New Year's celebration. The Drink with Rick New Year's special. How about that? So please join me for that. So that's what I've got for you. You know, I think it's just about time to close this up. A couple other things I want to mention. There's one more thing that I've been toying around with for a while. Uh, of course, we have Drink with Rick, the wine edition. I'll drink to that. But I've been thinking about doing, and this has been a long time of thinking about this for the last year, I've been thinking about, but I've been trying to figure out how to, to make this work, is to do a Drink with Rick coffee edition. And I was thinking, well, I could do a Sunday morning coffee, or I could do a Monday morning coffee edition. Monday morning would be perfect because everybody's getting on the road, and you can, you know, it's like <sighs> Monday morning i got to have a cup of coffee, right? And I love coffee. Next to wine, I also love coffee and tea. But I love coffee. And I drink a lot of coffee. As my wife will attest to, I drink a lot of coffee. And I drink a lot of tea sometimes. So wine's not the only thing I drink. I try to stay hydrated. Trust me, I try to stay hydrated with the water too. Uh, but uh, it's important to stay hydrated. But uh, the coffee, yes, I, I love good coffees. And I was thinking about doing a coffee edition of Drink with Rick, maybe starting it after the new year. And uh, I know it's been brought in. As a matter of fact, a couple of people brought it up. They may be brought, Barnstar maybe uh, suggested it a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it was already something I had been thinking about for a long time, but I wasn't, wasn't sure how I was going to incorporate it. But I'm thinking that it might start it after the first of the year and uh, might multi-stream it too. Good thing to wake up to on a Monday morning. Now the thing is that I work, I work Monday through Friday. I work during the week, so I'm I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of this. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make this happen because I like to sleep in up until the time I have to go to work Monday morning. Okay, but the thing is on Monday morning I have to have my coffee first thing. You know, so uh, and of course now I'm right now I'm working from home. I'm working from home, so it's not a big deal for me to get up a little bit earlier. And maybe do a half hour to 45 minute stream. Just a wake up Monday morning coffee. But it would have to be like 7, 7.30 or something like that. I, if I can get up that early. It have to be about 7.30 or so in the morning. Because I have to start my, my day at 9 a.m. 
uh, at work on my day job at By Two Way Radio. So still trying to sort this out, but we'll see. I'm, I'm interested in what you think. What do you think? Was this something that you'd be interested in watching, uh, listening to, something that you'd be interested in? And uh, getting into, I mean, seriously, because uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm toying around with this, but I haven't made a final decision on it yet. So let me know what you think, please. Let me know what you think. Put in your comments at Rick at SavoyMedia.com. Rick at SavoyMedia.com. Let me know what you think. Oh, tell me in the chat too. That's fine. Tell me in the chat. That's good. It's all good. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I got tonight, really, for the most part. Uh, let me catch up in the chat a little bit. Uh, but because my sister's in the chat, and uh, she says, she says uh, she's quite telling me. Yeah, thank you. She she is. Uh, Gina says it's in the blood. All our kids are artists, as are you. Remember all the movies you did as a kid? Yes, Gina. You know what? I'm gonna uh, throw uh, uh, put this on you for a second. But you know, I've made a lot of movies, and a lot of people here on, uh, especially on the Twitch uh, chat, are aware of this. Uh, I don't know if you've been keeping up with uh, a lot of what's going on in the wine stream for the last year, but you know I've been showing some of my films. <laughs> I've shown the entire, I've shown, uh, I've shown snippets of Attack of the Bubble Creatures, of course, but I've shown the entire film. I did a film night on, on Twitch where I showed the entire film. I've also shown uh, a couple of films you've never seen. Uh, one which with uh, was the uh, analyst. The analyst I showed that on one of the episodes of the wine stream uh, back, what was it, September? I think it was uh, September, October. Uh, I think it was around there where I did, or I showed the entire six minute, eight second uh, film, The Analyst. And uh, that was, uh, which was a classic. And uh, I have just finished uh, transferring the, uh, the uh, Space Age from Ice Planet Alpha, our, our feature film, but I have a lot more films in the works that are in the process of being transferred to video. Uh, some of those include uh, News at Six and uh, The Fan and some other films. Uh, some, of the, some, some of them you've never seen, but because uh, I made a lot of films. I made a lot of films in those uh, days that uh, I know you've seen a few of them. You've seen a few of them growing up. You, you saw a few of them. But uh, there are some that you've never seen that, that you're not aware of that I think would uh, you would really enjoy. I think you'd have a lot of fun watching uh, because there's some films that we made that uh, uh, on, on different genres, from different genres. But uh, I think you saw Space Apes at one time. I think I showed you and Edwin once. But um, I've done a full restoration on some of these, and I'm, doing a, I'm having a full restoration done on, on some of the other films. We're having this... It's a slow process, but uh, it's it's happening slowly, slowly but surely. I have a couple other films. Uh, Around the Pool in 80 Laps is one that I want to show to everybody. I don't know if we're going to show it on New Year's. I'm going to see if I can get it ready to show on New Year's, but that's another film, a classic, Around the Pool in 80 Laps. Stop motion animation, That's uh, it, it's a short film, and, and it's classic, a lot of fun. I think you'd enjoy it. You got Stick around for some of that. I think you'll really like it. Um, Gina says, Rick, does it work for earthquakes too? The, the weather radios, yes, it does. As a matter of fact, a lot of the weather radios we carry are, and this is not a pitch uh, per se, but a lot of the weather radios we carry are, uh, have what's called SAME technology, which, is, uh, which stands for uh, specific area messaging encoding, which means that what it does is that uh, with all of the different, uh, the, the, the all different broadcast areas, they, they send out a signal which will uh, is actually encoded. It's an encoded signal that's for specific areas of, of, of where they're covering. Like uh, there's seven different, there are actually seven different NOAA, official NOAA weather channels in the United States. And there's some in Canada too. But uh, specifically in the United States, there are seven specific assigned NOAA weather frequencies and they're assigned to different weather stations around the country. And what they do is they'll send out these same signals. They're uh, encoded signals. That what they do is for a lot of these weather radios, the, some of the weather radios are designed to pick up those encoded signals so that if it's in your specific area, let's say, for instance, if you're in a specific area of, let's just say, Arizona or, or, or let's say, New Mexico or someplace like that, 
or say Oklahoma. Oklahoma gets a lot of tornadoes. If you're in a specific area in, in Oklahoma, specific county, specific city area, and that that uh, NOAA weather station in that area has a, an encoded signal that it sends out that says this is from this is for this specific area of Oklahoma. Your weather radio will go off and tell you, hey, there's a tornado coming in your area, in your specific area. And it and it's not just tornadoes. It's it's they earthquakes. That it'll notify you about earthquakes, tsunamis. It will also. Uh, it will also notify you of uh, some other things that are not really nuclear, <laughs> nuclear alerts as well, you know, uh, uh, on the darker side. But um, hurricanes, things like that, floods, but it will all, and thunderstorms, st- you know, standard thunderstorms. But it will also, uh, any kind of severe weather ra- alert, but it will also do amber alerts. It will do amber alerts, silver alerts, those are for the silver alerts are for the, for the elderly. Uh, amber alerts. Uh, we just received an amber alert today. As a matter of fact, there was a, a young young uh, uh, child that uh, I guess was uh, that they, they were searching for today uh, in Gastonia, North Carolina, and I got the I got the alert on my phone because I have my phone program to get those amber alerts. But right away, also our weather radio went off. And the same amber alert came out over our weather radio. So it'll do amber alerts as well. So it's good stuff to have. This is Weather radios are great to have, not just for weather alerts, but for any kind of alert. I didn't mean to go along on that, but just to answer your question, that's, yes, it will. It will, will work for that, a weather radio. Um, and uh, same, S-A-M-E, uh, Specific Area Messaging technolo- uh, Encoding. Excuse me. It's, uh, that's what that same stands for. Gina says, let me co-host. I have a Breville Espresso, let me co-host. You know what? That would be kind of fun. I think we should. I think we should if you're up that early. I mean, for you, you're three hours behind me. I, that's pretty early. But if you're up to that, that could be fun to do. That could be a lot of fun to do. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, that would be kind of fun to co-host uh, to do that. Uh, the commercial spray away, she says. Yes, that was part of uh, News at 6. You remember that? News at six and Joanne's in the chat. Joanne, it's great to see you. Joe, tell me how you're doing. It's good. It's always good to see you, uh, Joanne, here in the chat. Gina says uh, Gina co-hosting. Oh, Joanne says Gina co-hosting sounds like trouble. <laughs> well, why don't you join in, Joe? <laughs> join in, Hi, Joe. If you just join us, I think you're being bigger trouble. Uh, Gina says uh, she's willing to help me drink this thing. If you're willing to help, come down here to do it too. Uh, just fly down here. We could all just drink this thing for uh, see how fast we can uh, uh, take care of this bottle. <laughs> this bottle here. So uh, you know that can be a lot of fun. Pete's in the chat. Pete's great to see you too. Pete's in the chat. Everybody comes in the chat a little bit late, but better late than never. Pete says, Night Rick just got in from Mannheim. Missed the show. Have to watch the repeat. It's okay. It's all good, Pete. Glad you're here. Glad to hear. Denise wishing you all a Merry Christmas. And right back at you, Denise. Thank you very much. Uh, she says it, it will be fun watching the Savoya siblings. <laughs> Let me get back to Twitch because I was uh, sitting there. For, so, uh, so proper Barnstar says, uh, awesome, New Year's wine stream. Yes, we're going to have a New Year's wine stream. He says, I'd so wake up for a drink with Rick Coffee edition. Well, please be there. Well, and that's, that's a, so we have a couple of, I think Gina wants to co-host. I think that's good. Barnstar, you'll be here to watch that. That's good, too. So I have a couple of... Uh, I'll put you guys down for uh, that's two yeses. Uh, he says, do I need to still send my comments to Savoy Media if I added my comment here? I think we got you down. I think you're good. Have you done a wine co-host episode before, Rick? Um, yes, I did with my son, Tommy. We, uh, uh, Gina, I don't know if you saw that yet. Or Joe, Joe I don't know if you saw it. But, uh, you know, when Tommy turned 21, we had a special. We had a, a two specials. We had... The uh, uh, Tommy turned 21, so we set out three bottles of wine, and he tasted each one of those. So, yeah, I did. Uh, he kind of co-hosted with me that night. And then uh, a couple of nights later, I think it was the next night, was it? Uh, we, we did three beers, and he tasted three beers, and we did that. So we did uh, a taste testing for Tommy's birthday. 
Cube Command Tommy's birthday. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, I hate to close these things down because it's it's uh, oh, it's getting way it's getting way late though. Um, man, I'm just having a great time. I'm great having a great time with everybody here. I hope you're having as good a time as I am because I'm just having an awesome time. I always have an awesome time when I, when I'm here with you. Uh, I really do, and uh, the more the merrier. Well, wow, this year, this is the last wine stream of the year. This year has been so, I mean, it's been a very tumultuous year for all of us, you know, with, with COVID and everything going on, everything happening uh, around. But in, in, in a lot of ways, it's been very, very trying for all of us. It really has. But you know what's been, been keeping me, one of the things that's been keeping me grounded somewhat, my wife, uh, my lovely wife, she, she keeps me, she always keeps me grounded. I don't know what I'd do without her. My kids and my friends, my family, and being in touch with, with, with everybody, all my friends, old friends, new friends that I've met. And this year, doing the wine stream this year has actually helped keep me grounded. My job has helped keep me grounded. Uh, it's done a, 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 so much for me. Uh, the folks at Buy Two Radios, uh, my bosses, my employers, my coworkers, and uh, some of whom have also kind of suffered because I know uh, 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 some of them have been through uh, a bit uh, t- through this. Uh, it's all been trying for all of us this year. It's been uh, very tough for all of us, for, tougher for some of the others. I've been very, very fortunate, very blessed to be in a situation that I that I am where I am. Uh, able to still be able to provide for my family, to be able to have an income. I, how long? I don't know. Hopefully, we'll all get through this fine. But it's it's uh, you know it's a day to day thing. Every day you wake up and say, you know, what's going to happen today? What's going to happen today? Twenty twenty. Now, let's say twenty twenty one is coming around the corner. We're going to do the twenty twenty one special. But the thing is, it's not about numbers. It's not about the years. And when you when it turns over to 2021, January 1st, and I hate to burst the bubble on this, but when January 1st rolls around, things aren't going to just all of a sudden change. They're not just going to poof and all of a sudden everything's different. It's 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 just another day. It's just another number. It's just another date on the calendar. And uh, you know that, that's it's not going to just magically happen. You know and, and it's important to realize that we have to keep ourselves grounded in, in what's real and what's going on for the moment and uh, to be aware of this, to be mindful of it. And, yeah, we can be hopeful, half faith, half hope. Yes, absolutely. But but realize that, that it, you know, everything like this is a day-to-day process. Who knows what 2021 will bring? Who knows? But uh, I'm not a prophet by any sense of the word. I'm not a prophet, and I don't profess to be. (laughs) I'm just me. I'm just another guy here. I'm just another cog in the wheel. You know, this great big, just one more, just one more traveler on this great big ball uh, that we call Earth. I'm just just here doing my thing, and uh, who knows? But I'll tell you what, that... uh, if, if nothing else, this year has been better just because you're here and you're in it. And we've been we've been doing this together for the last year. I can tell you that just having just coming here every Saturday night and sitting down and sometimes on on you know Thursday night or Wednesday night, whatever it is, or we're doing anything special. Just sitting here and having you guys come in here and be here with me and just 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 be here together, that makes all the difference to me. It really does, and I appreciate each and every one of you here. I hope you'll join me this this coming Thursday night. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. But look, uh, it's 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 getting late and it's time to close down the stream. I just want to tell you what uh, what a an awesome year this has been as far as doing this wine stream is concerned. 94 episodes, I couldn't have done it without you. I really couldn't. And I couldn't have done it without my wife or my kids. I certainly couldn't have done it without you. Being here talking to myself for 94 episodes. (laughs) 
I do that enough of my own already. Okay, so I just I'm just telling you how much I appreciate being you being here with me. And proper barn star says, uh, "Oh, cool! I'll have to check out the VOD, the video on demand." Yes, wishing everybody all the best through the end of 2020 and far beyond. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And. Uh, she says, when ladies come, when the ladies come down, I'll prepare all kinds of cheeses and meat and the Pepto Bismol. <laughs> oh well, yes. Joe says, Gina and I had socially distanced sushi last week. We are keeping close in these tough times. Wishing you a happy new year. Man, it's got to be tough to do socially distanced sushi. Well, at least you're having sushi together, but socially, yeah. Uh, were you doing this like the you know pulling down the mask, take a quick bite, pulling up the mask, yeah. Gina says, good thoughts there, Rick. All we can do is see how the next year goes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep the faith, folks. But, uh, man, I'm so glad you're here with me tonight. I really am. Uh, but it's time to close up tonight. Sadly to say, and I'm not going to break in a song like uh, Carol Burnett would. <laughs> you know that song. Uh, classic. But uh, I can't anyway because it's copyrighted. But uh, I want to say, I want to say how much I appreciate all of you being here through this past year. And please, uh, we're going to continue to do this. We're going to continue to do this. We're going to get to a show, episode 100, and we're going to have 100 bottles of wine on the wall, and maybe we'll all sing it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's just a few weeks away. Got to sound something special for plan, plan for that. But let's get to next week first, okay? Once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with me tonight. I do appreciate you. Um, just awesome. Uh, I want to say that, uh, oh, the final summary, the final summary, I almost forgot. I almost forgot the final summary, didn't I? Okay, the final summary is, this is the, what we're drinking here, what we're drinking is the Cabernet, this is the Val de uh, Solis Cabernet. This is a really fine Cabernet, and my sister Penny liked that, I sent them a bottle. Uh, Val de Solis Cabernet 2019, it is a French wine, and I do love the French. I like their wines, so that's for sure. And uh, this is a, uh, a really nice wine. It's very eclectic mix. It's, it's very, uh, my sister put it, she said it was um, complex, and it is. It really is a complex mix. Rather tannic, rather tannic. Uh, quite a bit of acidity to it. Blackberry, ch black cherry, red cherry. I got some red cherry, but plum, uh, not plum, excuse me, prune. Prune is what I tasted really in this wine. And now this opened up a little bit more. Let me see. Yeah, prune is, prune is pronounced in that wine. They're very interesting. A little oaky, but it's, and it's very dry. It's very dry. But it is uh, it's bold, but it's not too bold. It's not as bold as some of the ones I've had in the past that I didn't really care for. Oh, and I almost forgot. I did promise. I don't want to break this promise to you. Last show of the year. I did promise I would try it with cheese, blueberry, without the spaghetti in it, blue, blueberry pie. And this is an awesome, this is a homemade blueberry pie, by the way. That is a very good pie. Let's try it with the wine. Oh, wow. Rich. Very, very good. I'm going to have to have some more of this. After the show is done, I'm going to be eating the rest of this pie with the wine. Wow. Rich, but good. Very, very, very good. I, I rather enjoyed it. Very good. I like that. Okay kept my promise there on the uh, pie okay anyway prune, gina says pronounced yes pronounced it is somewhat pronounced very good G gina you're good with the dad jokes and you're not even a dad your mom good with the dad jokes you might want a dad joke book next week you might uh you might might do that can I bring your dad best dad uh bad dad jokes next week we'll we'll uh or thursday i should say and uh, you might win a book we have already given away a couple of those. Right, Barnes, sir? Okay, so thanks once again for being with me tonight. We, uh, I want to thank everybody. I don't know if I can thank everybody. Can I do that? I can think so. My sister Gina, my lovely wife Chi, 
And uh, who else was here? Um, lots of people in here. My, uh, I got a lot. I got to scroll through all these uh, notes here, just to make sure everybody knows here. My my sister-in-law Joanne, who will always be my sister-in-law, a sister actually. My sister Joanne, she'll always be like a sister to me. Uh, Pete, my cousin Pete. Thanks for being here in the chat. Yeah, you know, all family here. That's good. It's good. We're all family and friends. That's good. I like that. Who else is in here? Uh, I did mention my lovely wife, Chi, of course. Uh, CM Cinder, of course. And who else? Uh, I want to thank... Uh, I've got to go through the list here. I want to thank Barnstar, proper Barnstar, for being here in the chat. I want to make sure I don't miss anybody here. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? Uh Let's see, Algorith. Algorith, thank you for being here in the chat tonight. And uh, this is on Twitch. And Picanton, thank you from Argentina. Greetings right back at you from Argentina. And, you know, I tell you what, one of these days maybe I'll get to Argentina. I would love to tour some of the wineries there. Just, just uh, I mean, Some of the wines there are just awesome. They really are. Um, let's see, as I mentioned, Sam Center, thank you. And uh, I know there's some other people here. I just have to get down there to them. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. Um, but if I did, please, please forgive me because I don't mean to miss anyone at all. Uh, pick and did I mention? Yes, I did. And uh, somebody else in here. Who else was in here that I didn't see earlier? Uh, did I get everybody? I think I did. I hope so. Look, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with me tonight. Please, during the next week, please do not drink and drive. It's very important to me. I lost a nephew from a drunk driver. Um, I had a friend who lost both his legs or the use of both of his legs um, from a drunk driving incident years and years and years ago. I've uh, I've known people. I've had friends and uh, people. Uh, it's just it's. Uh, just not a good thing. Please do not drink and drive. I can't stress that enough. Drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel room, wherever you are. Stay there. Call an Uber. Call a Lyft. Call a friend. Do not drink and drive. Please do not text and drive. That's also a very bad thing. We've had near misses on the road from people who were texting and driving. I could tell you stories. Honestly, I could tell you stories. Amazing. Uh, just to help people know better, and they just still do it. So please do not text and drive. Because I want you to have a great week. But most of all, I want you to have a safe week. So you can all join me again here next week. And join me again here on Thursday night for New Year's celebration. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.